Uh, Tom Verducci joining us, speaking of great writers, senior baseball writer at Sports Illustrated, and he's profiled Mariana Rivera and uh, I think the cover story, Exit Sandman, and uh, Tom joins us now. Uh, let me start with the slight, at least some Yankees thought it was a slight, with a video tribute at Fenway with the Red Sox. How, how did you take it? How did Mariano Rivera take that? Well, Mariano, he's the epitome of class. Uh, he took it well, but I thought it fell flat. I mean, it, it, it came across as a little, um, I don't know, it just was not, I understand it was done tongue-in-cheek sort of, but, um, I, you know, I just didn't, I thought it was a joke that didn't work. Um, it wasn't appropriate, I didn't think, for the setting. And I could see why some people were upset about it. I don't think Marietta was. No. But I, it didn't work. It just didn't work. I had no problem with it, Tom, because I think they were acknowledging this is no better tribute than to let us show you we only got you one time. And I don't think it was meant to say, you know, hey, there's a rivalry here. I thought when you, know, you had Millar and Roberts and they all bowed down to say, you know, we're not worthy, Mo, and I – Maybe it wasn't delivered in a professional way, but I think that the intent there was was meant to be positive. Yeah, I do agree with the intent. Again, I didn't think it worked. And then it, they took it a little too far. <laughs> they then gave him an oil painting of Mariana responding to the ovation he got at 05 opening day in Fenway. I mean, what, what is Mariana going to do with that? Is that going to go above <laughs> the fireplace, above the mantle? I don't think so. What if they did no tribute, Tom? What if they didn't do anything? Yeah. <laughs> would that would that have been better? No. Uh, listen, it was better than the Sandcastle, the uh, Toronto Blue Jays gave There's different goofy things out there. <laughs> Enter Sandcastle. <laughs> uh, uh, is Jeter going to go through this next year? Oh, man. I don't know. I don't think Derek's the kind of guy who's going to let people know before the year ends. It'll be like Koufax. At the end of the season, he'll call a press conference and say, that's it, people. I'm done. And he'll know ahead of time that it is time to go. But I don't think he'll do it in advance. And Derek is the guy until the very last breath, last minute, probably thinks he can still keep playing at an all-star level. So I don't see him looking in advance and saying, this is going to be my last year. We see a lot of great relievers. Uh, they start out as starting pitchers. Now, I know you have kids now who are brought up and they're groomed to be closers, but here's Rivera, who was a starting pitcher, and Eric Gagne, and you had Dennis Eckersley. You can go down through history where you know, a lot of your great relievers started out as starting pitchers. What, what was it about Rivera that didn't translate into being a good starting pitcher? Really didn't have enough of a second pitch. I mean, he had a so-so slider, tried to develop a changeup, but never did that. Always had a good fastball. The cutter came in 97, but had a good live arm, but just didn't have enough to get through a lineup two and three times. And I think you're right. I think that's a common story among great closes. Raleigh Fingers, another one, guys who just didn't work out as starting pitchers. But when you face guys only one time around at the end of a game, you only need really one pitch. A lot of times it's a trick pitch, the splitter from Suter, and for Rivera, the cutter. But, uh, yeah, his stuff just didn't play out going around the lineup two and three times. I was uh, zipping around uh, DirecTV last night watching some of these games with a wild card race. The one thing that stood out, now I know that we got, I love that Kansas City's in it and Cleveland's in it and Tampa's my pick to win the World Series. But where are the people, where's the excitement here in some of these cities with this second wild card that was supposed to bring, you know, keep fans, you know, into this for uh, another month or two? You don't think that was allowed 10,000 in Tampa Bay? <laughs> I don't even think it was 10,000. And then Cleveland said 21,000. It just, there's no excitement there. Um, I think there's excitement for the media that you're, you know, you're looking at some of these other cities. Pittsburgh's in it. You know, that's what, that's great for baseball. I don't know if fans, if the fan experience is great to uh, kind of go along with this. Uh, what, what are we missing here? Well, it's always a tough time of year for, for teams to draw when you're talking about one school starts on midweek nights. Uh, very tough to get real big crowds. I mean, the attendance overall has been pretty good in baseball. It, it, last time I checked, it was slightly down. I mean, like really just slightly. It's basically even the last few years, which is good these days. Um, but, yeah, I get it. I mean, I still think the fans are buying into it. I think they like the fact that there's so many teams, especially in the American League, still with a chance to get into the postseason. I think people love that one-game play-in, the wild-card game. Yeah. The ratings have been good for that. But it's just historically been tough to get people to go out to the park once school starts in the middle of the week. Talking to Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated, his uh, cover story, Sports Illustrated, Exit Sandman, baseball fans bid adieu to one of the greatest. As far as handicapping this, 
How do you think this all ends with who grabs the two uh, wild card spots in the American League? Well, I'm with you on Tampa. Um, I like the Rays. In fact, I like them to go to the World Series. I had them losing to the Nationals in the World Series, but I still like that team. In uh, Texas, I'm a little concerned about. Uh, you look at the schedule, and it says the Indians should be the second wild card because it's it's Cupcake City after they finish up with Kansas City tonight. Texas has a tougher schedule. So I would go Cleveland against Tampa in the American League wild card game. Favorite in the National League overall is who? For me, it's the Cardinals, although I would acknowledge that the Dodgers have the best roster, especially now you saw Ramirez and Kemp get back in that lineup last night, and yeah. you got a 1-2 in Kershaw and, and Granke. Nobody's better than that. Um, but the Cardinals just have this it factor. I mean, this the season that they're having with runners in scoring position is unprecedented. No one's been even close to this good with runners on base the way the Cardinals have been. And they're a really deep team. I just think they're a tough out in postseason play. But if you ask me what roster I'd want, I'd say the Dodgers. All right, so how's this all play out? Let, let's get rid of your preseason pick for a moment. And if you had a clean slate, who do you have in the World Series? I, I would go the Red Sox against the Dodgers. It's because the the the, uh, the Red Sox, to me, they're just a bear to deal with in that lineup. I mean, they wear pitchers down. They're pitching now, getting straightened, straightened out with buck holes back and looking really good, by the way. And home field advantage every round. It's the best home team in baseball. So they're a tough out. Um, and the Dodgers, I know I went with the Cardinals, but that's just more of the way I feel about the Cardinals. But, again, the, what they have and what they throw at you and the days off in the postseason where they keep throwing those starting pitchers at you, um, they got something going on here. So how about that World Series? Though? If it winds up in Dodgers against the Red Sox, that's a huge World Series. Oh, yeah. You got East Coast, West Coast, two of the uh, more popular franchises. Have they ever met? Um, I'm trying to think, uh, considering what the Red Sox haven't done prior to 04. I don't believe so, but you have the, the whole intrigue of that trade last year. Yeah, I call that's it the true. bailout trade. I mean, only the Dodgers' <laughs> money could have gotten all that uh, money off the Red Sox payroll. And both teams are better for it. I was going to ask you, who got the better end of that deal now? You know, I, I think they both would do it again because the results have been good. I mean, Beckett broke down, but Adrian Gonzalez was really where that deal literally began. The Dodgers have wanted him for years, and that's they went to Stan Cass and the Dodgers' ownership went to the Red Sox and said, let's talk about Gonzalez again. It started expanding. Um, but the Red Sox couldn't have made all the moves they did this winter and turning a, a team around with guys like Napoli, and Gomes, and Victorino, and Drew, some real tough-minded guys with playoff experience, unless they unloaded all that money with Gonzalez and Crawford and Beckett. So good on both sides. Good stuff, Tom. Thanks for joining us, and look forward to reading uh, Exit Sandman. You got it, Dan. Right. Tom Berducci, senior baseball writer. The uh, cover story is Mariona Rivera, Exit Sandman. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings, on audience.